from Jerusalem and into your world. Welcome to Israeli Insiders, the Maoz Israel podcast. Here, you will hear stories and articles about Israel from Israel. For questions or comments, don't forget to write us at connect at maozisrael.org. And now your host, Shani Ferguson. Shalom from Jerusalem. My name is Shani Ferguson, and welcome to this edition of Israeli Insiders, where we discuss various things happening in Israel and related to Israel all over the world. I think most of the surprises as to who would stand with Israel and who wouldn't have been in our favor, but it is always disappointing when you think, okay, finally things have gotten bad enough that the world will open their eyes and see. So a lot of what our military and our government has been involved internationally is not just fighting this war, but fighting the war in a way that we can prove that we're still under threat. Meaning, when we go into a place in Gaza and we have to go into a school or a hospital, we have to go with cameras to show people, look, this was a classroom. These books are teaching children to be terrorists. These are guns and these are RPGs that are being stored in the hospital or in the school. And here's the tunnel entrance to Hamas's tunnel network. So it's not like we ever have the privilege of just going in and taking out the enemy. The battle is always about fighting the enemy and showing the world what's really happening. I just recently saw a clip on Instagram where they show a woman being interviewed in Gaza and she's saying, oh, you know, America's just in favor of Israel and Israel's just trying to stretch its borders. And this is, you know, the, the standard line. And then the reporter goes back to the camera and he's talking and you see the guys behind cracking up and high-fiving each other. The woman who had just been crying two seconds ago saying, you know, the world is ending and it's all Israel's fault. And they're all laughing because they know that this is all a joke that's being played on the West. So I have to say it's frustrating to see that and you want to show it to people and Either they really, really are ignorant and the information hasn't got to them, which is our hope, and that's why we're working hard to make that happen, or it doesn't matter what you show them. We have testimonies of terrorists on October 7th admitting to you know raping and mutilating and, and killing, and we have to actually go and get these testimonies and air them to prove the legitimacy of our fighting in there. So... I went down with some of the Ma'oz team down to um, some of the villages and towns near the Gaza border. We have been down there during this war to harvest, but we haven't been down to see the ruins. Kobe has. He's taken our daughter when we were uh, giving supplies to soldiers early, early on. But this is five months later, and we were given permission to go into certain areas. One of them was Kibbutz Be'eri one of the hardest hit places. We filmed about a 12-minute kind of documentary of what we saw there. I would encourage you to go see it. It's called We Are Witnesses. You can find it at wearewitnesses.org or you can just go to YouTube and look up We Are Witnesses. I think it's a significant time in history in which I would encourage people to come here and see the ruins themselves. I think that if you had the opportunity to visit, say, Auschwitz, you know, six months after everything, before they had time to fully clean up, when there was still residue, and, you know, today it's a memorial, and it stands there as a testament, but there's something about recent atrocities that is still in the air, and that was what we experienced in Bailey. It's been five months, and you can still feel what happened there in the air. They haven't cleaned up everything. They've cleaned up the human remains, but they've left a lot of places just as they were that day so that people could come experience. Because I, I just think there's some things you can't even fathom unless you walk there yourself. So I'd encourage you to do it. We are planning a tour in September because we think uh, July and August is too hot to really come and try to process everything. But this morning I was driving to work and they 
we're saying on the news that in Kibbutz Beri, where we'd just been, it rained and they found in the ash more human remains. And again, you go there and you can feel, it's really hard to describe. I just would encourage you to come. I feel like this is a very important time in history and people should take advantage of being firsthand witnesses of what happened here. It will just give you the authority of being a firsthand witness of what happened. Because one of the biggest things that Israel is having issues with right now is we're only a few months away. We have all the evidence. We have personal testimonies. We have returned hostages. And people still don't believe that anything happened. Literally, you interview people and they're like, I haven't seen any footage of that. I haven't seen any evidence of that. And like, you're just, you're amazed. But it's important for us to have that experience ourselves because we will be living testimonies and witnesses of what happened. It reminds me in the scriptures where, you know, the disciples are saying we are firsthand witnesses of what we saw. And it was an important factor. So again, I encourage you to come. Also, a phenomenon I would like to address because I know that there's so much interest that is happening here and you know sometimes it feels like you're kind of watching a movie from a distance you know when you're in a different country and it's like Israel's always been so fascinating and there's all these mysteries and please be respectful of what is happening here I love that there's interest Israel needs as many friends as she can possibly have but I would encourage you to be responsible with your interest in Israel and here's what I mean Occasionally, I get emails and posts about sensationalistic things, and I want to encourage you not to forward them and not to engage. And here's examples. Number one, if you get an email saying, there's this top secret thing that the army is about to do, and I have like inside scoop and -and so-and-so told me, we need to pray that it works. First of all, either that's entirely made up, because nobody in their right mind would be like, oh, we're going to go in some top secret thing. I'm going to go tell somebody else. Or someone's leaking information and you're just helping the enemy know about it. Okay. We have commercials on our radio constantly telling us, like, don't even call home and tell your family members where you are because you're, they're tracking us. They're trying to figure out where we are. You know, there's all sorts of uh, temporary bases and locations of um, whole army units. And if they're found out where they are, then they get fired on and then they have to move and it just creates more problems and it puts our soldiers in danger. So A, I would encourage you not to forward emails and information like this. Of course, you can always pray, God help our soldiers, help them go do the mission rescue, do it as cleanly as possible, avoid hurting non-combatants, and get out of there safely, you can always pray for that. This isn't like, you know, some politician said something in secret about these. This is war. People's lives are at stake. And using the fact that there's Christians out there that want to be as involved as possible to kind of like make yourself look like you're the in the know person is not appreciated over here. In addition, there are all sorts of stuff now. I mean, it's there's always been a lot of like, you know, oh, I know the end times scenario of what's going to happen in Israel. And, you know, Israel's always just this kind of pawn where like, you know, two thirds of us die or a third of us get whatever, or there's starvation or there's whatever it is that's bad. It always happens to us. I would encourage you guys to stay focused on what the scriptures tell us to stay focused on, which is the kingdom of God today. What happens in the future? I don't care how many amazing charts you have. The scriptures specifically say there's certain things we won't ever know. So there's all sorts of hints, and it's great to sit and kind of pour over them and pray into them. That's fantastic. Don't make that the focus of what's happening the moon's out and it looks like this and then there's a hurricane after that and then there's sightings of all sorts of you know really cool things great great don't lose sight of the focus if we had someone come and tell us we're going to go to the moon and 
we need a team of people to help build the spaceship. And everyone just stood there and stared at the moon the whole time. That spaceship would not get built, right? So we have a job to do right now. If the end times have not arrived yet, it's because there's stuff to do before then. So I would encourage you, stay focused, the kingdom of God now. Get your life right before the Lord. Take care of your family. Be praying for Israel. Be praying for your community. And watch the wonders of God unfold. I do want to thank all of you who have written us and said, you know, we're praying for your daughter. She is in the army. I can't tell you what she does or where she is. She can't even tell me. So thank you. Thank you for that. And thank you for praying for our soldiers. And it's just, it's been an incredibly encouraging time to be a believer in the country, to see the ability of believers to really help our country in significant ways. It's been amazing to watch. And it really, again, has happened because Christians have stepped up and said, we not only want to bless Israel, we want to bless Israel through the Messianic community. We want to not just help do things in Israel, but to do it in a way where Jewish believers have a voice and have a hand in what's happening. And so because of that, because of that attitude and not just like we're going to rush in and we're just going to throw money at anybody that, you know, looks half Jewish or whatever, you guys have really engaged us. And first of all, thank you. Thank you for trusting us. Thank you for trusting our ability to be on the ground and look and see where there is need and make sure that we help in a way that matters and help in a way that sees the future. We have some incredible projects on the horizon that we will be sharing about in the future. And of course, everyone is looking north right now. The war is still going on in Gaza. And there are some events that could take place down there to raise the tensions more than they are right now. But everyone is also looking up north because we are being fired on daily from the north, daily, multiple times a day. You know, the only reason that this doesn't even make news is because our air defense guys you know, the Iron Dome that you're all familiar with and several other air defense capabilities that we have that have protected our citizens. Some rockets have hit, destroyed homes, killed people. Doesn't make the news. Why? Because we all know the overall agenda is to look like we're not suffering and we're just the aggressors. So, but it is a topic worth praying about because the entire northern border right now is evacuated and has been for months. Every All the focus has been in Gaza and there's things happening there and there's the recovery efforts. But the entire northern border has been evacuated for months and this is affecting families. There's families that were already on rocky footing and being displaced and not having a place where you can, you know, take care of your kids and having a framework for them. There's all sorts of things happening to unsupervised children and damage happening to relationships because there's no stable place for them to function. The trauma factor is huge. The psychologists in Israel are saying the trauma factor that is as of yet unattended, unaddressed entirely because everything's so up in the air, has affected so many families. And so it's definitely something to pray into because we're not just looking at the current war. We're looking at decades of damage that this has done to our culture. You know, I I remember when I was a kid and they used to talk about the Holocaust and they said, you know, we're only one generation removed from the Holocaust. And you have people that went through trauma and then they had children and raised them, you know, moved here. And so many of them like lived and raised their kids, but in their own lives, they had very, very difficult times. And a lot of times that damage is passed on in your parenting. And and so we're looking at not just current damage, but damage generations forward. And we want to, to stall that as much as possible. And one of the main ways to do that is to get counseling to these people who are displaced and the people that have gone through trauma. And it's one of the things that Maoz has been engaging with recently is finding believing psychologists. And the reason that matters is because you're not just a mind, you're not just an emotion, you're a spirit and how the spiritual aspect of everything that has happened and the onslaught of evil that is behind what Hamas and Hezbollah are doing is very much in the air. 
And it's one of the reasons that when people come here, they're like, I heard the news, I've been following I'm everything. And then I set foot in this country and it's just, you understand so much more when you're here experiencing it. There's just, there's only so much we can communicate from here over the airwaves. And, you know, I even had one place that I saw in the ruins, and I, I didn't explain this in the We Are Witnesses video. I am standing there. You can see you can see the place that I'll describe now, but I didn't talk about it. But it's a beautiful home. And the whole area was just the greenery was so beautiful. Even after the attacks, it was such a stark contrast of the plant life, the gardening that they had done in this place and these beautiful plants and then these destroyed homes. And there was one place that had been cleaned up and I couldn't step foot on the patio because the evil was so tangible. And this was five months later. And I tried to step up to just kind of walk up to the house and I, I literally couldn't breathe. I'm like gasping for air. And like, I don't know how to explain that. Like, I felt like if I would step onto the patio that I would just be stepping into hell and be surrounded by evil and I, I, I couldn't do it. And so I'm standing like far away from the house and I'm describing it. And then later the woman who, because um, I didn't know the story of that particular house, you have pictures kind of hanging from each house that was destroyed. You have pictures of the people that used to live there that were either murdered or kidnapped. And I walked off and I said, that house. And she said, you know, that that was one of the houses. And her, her job is to walk people around and explain to them what happened. And she said, that was one of the houses that when I heard people describing the story, I, I had to leave the room because it was so bad. So you understand that there was such a spirit behind it and it's still sitting there. And it's still like, how do you even explain that to someone? The Lord describes hearing Abel's blood crying out from the ground. And I had one of one of my team members say to me, you know, I I never understood that verse until I, I walked in this kibbutz and I walked through these ruins and just that's what you feel. That's what you you can almost hear it. But it's again, I can only describe this to you. You have to come experience it for yourself. So if you have been following the Ma'oz Israel report, of course, we've been writing it for more than 40 years, but in the past six months, we've really addressed different topics of the war, personal stories, addressing some approaches that Christians have had, some issues that they're wrestling with. And this month's April Ma'oz newsletter addresses two things. Number one is just the concept of the promised land. Because I think everyone kind of sits on the side and thinks, you know, oh, you guys think you're chosen because you're the best and you get your promised land because you just get the best and whatever. And so I, I address what a promised land is, what it means, what's its purpose. And then I address what I consider to be the scariest parable in the Bible. I just, I read it, I look at it, I try to see it from the most honest possible you know, like, Lord, is this what you're saying? Because it's very disturbing. And I think everyone should take a fresh look at it. It's a very well known parable, probably heard sermons about it your whole life. And I don't think you've ever heard someone suggest that this is what it means, really. But I can't see that it means anything else, even if I wanted it to. So I would encourage you guys to go in and read it. But these are the things that we're addressing. Ma'oz has been here for years. We're still continuing to do worship. We're still releasing a worship song every two weeks in Hebrew, in Arabic, in English, adult worship, children worship. But we also have the war efforts. And so we've been doubling up. We have team members that are on the field fighting for us. And we appreciate your prayers and we appreciate your engagement. And we overwhelmingly appreciative of you guys supporting us and the war relief efforts and the evacuated families and their needs, their educational needs, their clothing needs, the families of those who are fighting in the war. It's one big hot mess. But, you know, there's times in scripture where like things are a mess and it says, 
kind of as like a little side note, but they didn't know the Lord was in it or they didn't know the Lord was coming or, but then the Lord came in and rescued. And that is the part of the story that we're focused on. So if you'd like to write us, you can write us at connect at mallisisrael.org. We appreciate you engaging us. We appreciate you standing with us. If you want to give towards the war relief effort, you can go to israelneedsme.com. We've had incredible opportunities that we can't wait to tell you about soon. So stay in touch. And until next time, this is Israeli Insiders. I'm Shani Ferguson. Shalom from Jerusalem. Thank you for joining this episode of Israeli Insiders. Visit us at maozisrael.org. Don't forget to follow us on Facebook and Instagram or write us your questions and comments at connect at maozisrael.org.